So let's get back to our mongoose demo here. Uh, one, let me know if this, does this look a little better than it did yeah, yesterday? Much better, yeah. Okay, okay, fair enough. Cool. So right now we've got everything in this one file, which is a bit large. We're not pushing 100 lines, but you guys can imagine if our application got really large, then, then we would have a very, very big file here. So what we want to do is we want to break it up. And in the platform, we've given you kind of a, uh, a sample structure here. So let me open up that little lesson here. And the structure is as follows. We'll have a folder for all of our server-oriented stuff because tomorrow we'll actually be adding a React app to this project. And then inside our server folder, we're going to have a config folder, a controllers folder, a models folder, and a routes folder. And then we'll also have that server.js, which we already have now. Okay, so let's add this server folder to our project. And then inside that, I'm just going to bring my server.js. Okay, the other folders that we need are models. And then we also want controllers. So we're going to have a route. Yeah, so we're going to have an actual config folder oh, yeah. in which that mongoose.config will go into. So then we'll have config. Cool. And then um, let me see if I'm still running this. Okay, cool. I'm not running this anymore. So instead of nodemon server.js, I'm going to have to go one more level in. So I'll say, make that slightly bigger. I'll say nodemon server slash server.js okay so now we're just we're inside the server folder okay and it's still working and kind of as we modularize this I want to just make sure that we didn't we don't break anything because that could easily happen all right um, one of the first things that we can kind of bring out of here is this part right here where we're just doing our mongoose.connect right so this looks like essentially just some sort of configuration and I can easily just grab this code let me grab this up here and then inside our config folder let's just create this mongoose.config.js okay and now back inside my server.js instead of having all of this stuff here I can just require that file, right? Okay, so if I say require, normally if we don't have any kind of um, any kind of a dot or a slash in the front of what we're requiring, do you guys remember where it's going to be looking for whatever whatever module it is? Where would it look for that? Where? No, if we had no kind of pathing in front of it, it's going to look inside the node modules folder for it. So here, we're going to include some pathing. We're going to go into our, so the dot slash just means the current directory that we're in. We're going to go into our config, and then we'll go into mongoose.config. Now, notice that I don't have to say mongoose.config.js, OK? So files that end in .js are automatically going to be resolved for you. You don't have to include the .js. And then let's save that and let's double check and make sure everything's good. So we still seem to be okay. And if I make some of my API requests here, getting all my cities right, still working. All right, cool. So the other thing that we can do, um, we've got this city schema down here. And we also registered this city schema. Where could we, uh, where could we potentially put that, do you think? Models. inside our models right so I can make this file it would just be city is it like that city.model yeah. in the platform mm -hmm. okay cool all right and then let's just grab um, all of this right here go back into our city.model <laughs> I don't have reference to mongoose anymore, so I'm going to need to require that, right? Uh, 
Amazon's long use. All right. And then the other thing that I want to do is I want to have access to this city model somewhere else on my application. So is it enough to is it enough for me to just kind of like establish this model here, or do I need to actually export it? I'm gonna actually have to export this, right? Okay, so I can say module.exports, and I can set this to be whatever I want. Whatever I want this file to export is what, what I'll put in here. And here, I'm just going to say I'm going to export the city model. Okay. All right, and then in our routes, what we're going to want to have are all of these different routes, right? So my app.get, my app.delete, and so forth. So let me grab all of this code as well. Okay, and then inside my routes, I can create another file here called city.routes.js. Okay, and I'm just going to paste in this code. So there's a lot going on here, but um, in order for me to have reference to this city here, what am I going to need to do? Exactly. I'm going to have to require my model. So I can say something like const city equals require. And where do I need to go? So right now I'm inside this, this file that we're in is inside the routes folder. So I need to go up one level and then I need to go into my models folder and then grab that city model, right? So we'll go dot dot models, oops, slash city dot model. Okay, and that should give me reference to my city. So let's um, let's delete some of this right here. Okay, and you can see how our uh, our file is already kind of slimming up a bit. Okay, and then back in my city dot routes. We're going to make a little bit of a change here. So right now we're not exporting anything, right? I do want to export something. What I'm going to export in this case is actually going to be a function. So we'll say module.exports equals a function that takes in an app. And then inside the body of this function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply all of these routes that we have right here. So I can take all of this code that I've got here and move it up inside this function body. All right, so let's make sure we, we kind of understand what's going on here. A little bit of reading. Mike, what's happening on line three? <coughs> <laughs> Does that wake you up? Exporting all the all the um all that stuff like the, the arrow um, code into the exports Yeah, so when we say module.exports that means that this file is exporting something. And then we're setting that equal to what? What's this whole thing over? No, I'm, I'm not exporting the app, right? The app is actually being uh, created in our server.js. What am I exporting exactly? If you see that arrow, that should tell you something. Arrow function. There we go. Yeah, so we're exporting a function, right? Okay, cool. And then inside that, inside the body of the function, we're simply attaching these different routes to this application that the function takes in, right? Module exports, that's an express thing. No, this is a Node.js thing. So whereas in, in our front end applications, in our, in our React, what we were doing is we were saying something like export default, 
That's essentially equivalent to this, this module.exports equals something. Okay? It's saying that this file is exporting the, whatever we set to it. That's all. Yeah, so I guess in that regard, why don't you just use the email? Eventually, you will be able to. And actually, you can if you use um, an experimental flag when you run your node projects. But um, you also have to, if you, if you use the experimental flag, then you have to include the .js extension when you're, when you're requiring things, or importing, I should say. So, I mean, it has like some, some pluses and minuses, but eventually, yeah, all of this stuff will be consolidated. We'll just be able to use import statements in Node just like we do on the front end. All right. So now what we're, we're, what we're exporting is this function, which means that back in my server.js, we have to require it, right? So let's say require, and I'm going to go into my routes folder. And then we'll say city.routes. Okay? So since that's going to give me back a function, what can I do with it? I can actually call that function right away, right? This whole require statement right here is going to give me back that function that I just exported. So I can invoke it like this against the application. Okay. Now notice that this is essentially equivalent as doing something like this. I'll split it up into two lines so that it's a little more clear for you guys. So we'll say const routes equals requiring that thing. And then what we'll do is we'll call that function against the app on the, on the very next line. Yeah, so we'll just say routes, invoke that against the application. Uh-oh, I broke something. App is not defined. Oh, you're you're absolutely right. Yeah, I sure didn't. Okay. All right. So now we're not broken. Fixed. That's cool. All right. So so this is working as expected. Um, I can keep testing just to make sure that we're all good. All right. We're all good. Cool. So the only, it looks like the only thing that we haven't done is we haven't touched a, uh, any files inside of our controllers directory, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and create that guy. So we'll say city.controller.js. Okay. And inside this controller file is where I'm going to have all of the logic for those individual routes. Okay, so if I go back to my, uh, my routes file here. What we're going to have is we're going to have all these different different methods or functions and there are a couple different ways that I can export those from my city city.controller file. The one that I'm going to show you guys is we're just going to export an object. Okay? And inside that object, again, this is where we're going to have all of our different functions that we'll be using for these different routes. So, since my functions are going to go inside here, I'm also going to need a reference to my city model, right? So what do I need to do? I need to require that, right? So I'll say const city equals require. And where is that at? That's going to be one level up. And then inside my models folder, city.model, right? Okay. And then we're going to have to create some names for these functions. So for the first one, this was like create city, right? So I'm just going to grab this right here. And then inside my controller file, I'm going to do create like that. Okay. This is a little bit of a shorthand and it might look slightly different from the platform, but basically what I'm saying is I'm creating a property inside this object called create, and that property is going to be a function, because you can see with the parens it's saying I'm taking in the request and the response, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's create. Let's go grab the next thing that we want. 
This is just going to be our get all. So I'll rip that out and then back in here we'll just create a new thing, get all. And again, no longer an arrow function. Why am I getting a, a uh, red squiggly here? Does anyone know? I don't have to, um, but I, but I can, and and actually maybe I'll show you guys that real quick. But this is an object, which means that every key value here needs to be separated by a comma. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I wanted to export them individually, I could do that, like we were talking about. So I could say exports dot create equals a function that takes in a request and response and looks like that. Okay? This would be the approach of, of exporting everything individually, like what Juan was talking about. Do you guys do you guys kind of prefer this or prefer this? I, I don't I can go either way. I don't the really bottom, the bottom. The bottom one? Okay. Do you if you export it individually so you don't have to use the module dot exports? Correct. Yeah, so if we did what we were doing on line three through five, then we could just stick with that and not have module.exports. All right, so there we go. We've got create and get all. And then the next one that we want is get one, right? So I'll just grab this code right here. Come down here, we'll call it get one. Okay, that's good. Next we've got delete. So let me grab this function here. And then we'll call that delete. Fair enough. Okay, and then finally we had our update function. So let's go down there. Grab this guy. Is someone playing flute? No, it's a guy. Oh. All right. Got some musicians in the house. Flautus. Nice. Okay, there we go. So, so we brought in all of our individual functions. Now, since we're exporting this as one single object, inside my routes file, I can actually import that same object, right? So let's do that. So I'm going to save this. And then inside routes, let's come up here. And I no longer need to import or require city, right? Because all I want are those functions that we were just exporting from our, uh, our controller file. So let's say const city controller equals, it's gonna be set to requiring, and then we have to go up one level, right, into our controllers folder city.controller. Okay, so now that I've got this, all I need to do is plug in these different functions, right? So how can I reference them? Again, this is a, this is an object. Anyone? Say that one more time. It's not going to be module.create, it's going to be citycontroller.create, right? So city controller dot create. Okay. And then I can um, yeah, let's do the same thing for all these other guys too. So our get city controller dot get all, I think is what I called it. Okay, and here this is get one. Get one. Okay. And then here we've got delete, so that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, sure did. See on controller. Okay, and then finally we got city controller dot update, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a very very good question. So if I didn't want to have to say dot every time, what I could do is I could destructure the entire thing. So I could come in here and do something like this where I brought out create 
get all, and so forth, get one, right? And then that would just make it so I only have to say create, get all, get one, and so forth. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, <laughs> this is a preference. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of why I wasn't doing it, is that it's a bit of a toss-up here. I mean, sometimes it, it, it is nice and it if helps it was, us. If it is structured, you have to type in every single one of them twice, right? True. So this way you can just paste it and cover everything. And it'll be well. mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this way is fine, too. I don't, I don't really have any problems with it. Do you have to import city into the controller? No, the reason why is because we're not using city directly, right? It's the city controller oh, that's the now, that now needs city. Well, into the city doctor, you know, the address, or just the input city? Didn't I? I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise we'd have a problem. But, <coughs> right. um, yeah, that crash was from before. So yeah, right, yeah, yeah. so right now it should still be fine. Um, still working as expected, right? And let's uh, double check our. Sidebar here. Did we fill out all of these folders? I think we did, right? Yeah, so we got our config, we've got our controllers, our models, and our routes. Good. Cool. So let's see, let's just kind of go, th go through things from top to bottom. So here, am I even using Mongoose anymore inside my server.js? No, so I can actually remove this, right? Okay. On line three, what's going on, Juan? You are uh, importing the uh, uh, stuff and taking file from your uh, folder. Good. So then if we were to take a quick look in this, what's that doing? <laughs> uh, you are connecting your Mongoose to your Mongoose. OK. And the two option uh, uh, argument you're passing is uh, to just get rid of the uh, one that's in the Right. So, so the first thing is our connection string, which is telling us what database are we trying to use. And then the second argument was just an object that had some different options in it. And these we were using because you'll get deprecation warnings if you do not. All right. So back to our server.js. What else are we doing here? Next, line five, Chazé. Close. I mean, we're not really using the app yet, right? Do we even have an app currently? Okay. So what's going on on the left side? Yes. And then we're assigning that to the result of invoking Express. Good. All right. With the line three, why are we not assigning that to a variable? Did we need to? So first of all, if we, if we look inside of our uh, mongoose.config, is this even exporting anything at all? <laughs> but what it's going to do is it is still going to run this code for us, yes, to establish our connection. Yeah. But it's not like we need it. Once we required it in our server.js, there was nothing that we really needed to do with it, right? We just simply needed it to run the code to establish the connection. So, so I guess on, on that regard, right? So when we're doing imports mm -hmm. uh, on any files, um, I'm, I'm not sure like well, how do you refer to that space, but like the the, the space that's not bracketed by anything, because it says the import of files either with encapsulated by um, separate files or something. But I guess with the way that's being ran, is it's at the, the file level or like you know, the topmost that Yeah, it just means that it's going to run the code of the file that we required. OK, okay so back to our um, server.js. We did this part. We created our application, line 6. Who's over there, Stefan? <laughs> <laughs> I like the response. Uh, Curious. Uh, I don't know. Like express.json? It's like basically we're telling that we're using JSON or, or a, um, an object to our database. Okay, so in terms of what's going on here, we're invoking a function inside these parentheses, right? We're invoking this function called JSON. 
then we're also invoking another function outside of it, right? When we say app.use, that's saying for every request that comes through our application, we want to use this thing. That's, that's something called express middleware, okay? Middleware is just something that's in between the request and the response. So this middleware is gonna do what for us? Do you guys remember what the point of that is? It's, it's going to take whatever the body of the request was, so if somebody is submitting some JSON to us, and making it available in that rec.body, right? Otherwise, rec.body, as you guys recall, was undefined. Yeah, so we need to do that. All right, good. Line eight. What do we got over there? Is that Nick? Hi there. Hey, Nick. <laughs> Line eight. Okay, so we're, we're declaring this constant variable called routes and we're assigning it to the result of requiring this particular file, right? And then if we go back to our routes file, this is what we have. So now we've got kind of a chain of things that are happening because now our routes is requiring something else, right? It's requiring our controller. And then if we go to our controller, we're requiring our model, okay? All right, so let's keep going here. Um, finally, on line nine, what are we doing there? Ah, that's it. <laughs> Man. That's it. <laughs> line nine. So, so what this returned, as you recall, we exported from that file a function, right? So if I go over to my routes file one more time, that's what's happening here. We said module.exports, and then we're assigning that to an arrow function, right? So now, now we can invoke that because we exported a function. So this routes is just a function. Make sense? Yeah. All right, cool. And then finally... Line 11, Isaiah. Yeah, listen on this particular port. This is where we want to be able to make our requests to. Okay, are there any other spots in here that you guys wanted to go through a little bit more? I have a quick question. Yeah. Why on the top right there where it says, oh, on the other file, it says app.use. Express why isn't the express like app.json? Because you're like, because it's like, I feel like you're assigning the app to the express thing already. Because express, which we required up here, has included in it this, this function called JSON. And that's the one that we're invoking in this case. That function is the one that allows us to attach the, the JSON to our rec.bot. Question. Mm -hmm. um, do you recommend like you're gonna do all in the service of JS everything first and then you break it down after? Or no, no, I wouldn't say to do that. Um, the reason why I kind of started that way is just so that we didn't have to think about like where everything goes the first time. I just wanted you guys to see that you know this is how everything works together. But once you get once you get in the habit of modularizing, you'll feel a little better just doing it that way for the so yeah. Yeah, essentially it would be. And so, of course, when we add React tomorrow, in, in addition to that server folder, we'll also have a client folder, which would be all of our front end. Yeah. You're uh, almost there, almost at the full stack. Cool. Anything else, guys? Torture? Wow, that's fun, huh? <laughs> no, it's just remembering all this. Because like, yeah. we don't use it, right? Well, it
like the city is it possible to just Oh, you mean like f fetching your configuration stuff? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, in fact, there there are some um, different ways to do it. You can either use something called dot env. Or in, and there are a number of other these different like configuration modules that you can use, or you can even um, establish your environment variables before you run the project. You can you can establish those in the command line. Depends on how many you have. If you have a whole bunch of different configuration values, you probably want to have those in a file somewhere. But that file you'd probably not want to include in your uh, in your repository. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to reuse this node modules folder? Yeah. <clears throat> so that's essentially like an environment, right? Like a virtual environment for all of us. Yeah, you could do that. You you could basically copy this over. I don't know that that's gonna save you any time though. No, because I'm not copying it over, just telling that somewhere. And then you, every time we make an app, just reference to that instead of because every time you make a small app that has hello world, it makes like twenty megabytes of modules. All right. Yeah. Well, the thing is, um, I think there is this other thing called PNPM, if I remember correctly. And, and the way that PNPM works is that it has like some location on your computer where it stores all of the modules that you've recently installed. So it kind of keeps like a cache of them. So if you end up reinstalling the same thing for various projects, it would, as you're saying, kind of use the same copy of it. PNPM. So you, yeah, you could look into that if you want. PNPM. Yeah. Good question. All right, cool, guys. Let's break and get to it. Boom.